Let's ask for the moon, Jerry. We have the stars. Sentimental nonsense. Absolutely. <laughs> the sheer escapist twaddle. A fairy tale situation. I'm totally unbelievable characters. It works, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, two grown adults reduced to hysterical wrecks by a load of 40s tat. Oh, <coughs> it's not tat, Terry. Everyone was so much more elegant then. I can remember the first dance you took me to. You wore a white dinner jacket just like Paul Henri did tonight. Why don't you ever wear that anymore? Well, the same reason I don't wear a pixie hood. I grow out of it. <laughs> In any case, if I did, I'd look like a waiter. Oh, no, you wouldn't. You were so romantic then. Do you remember Sunday afternoons at our house when Mother was having a rest and Dad was washing up and we'd sit alone together? Do you remember what we used to do? Yeah, listen to the Billy Cotton Band show. <laughs> no, not that. What we'd do together, alone, when no one was about. We didn't do that, did we? <laughs> You used to write me poetry. What, me? Nah, you must be mixing me up with that other bloke you went out with, the one who used to make all his mother's frocks. <laughs> you used to write the most marvellous poetry. I can remember the first poem you ever wrote me. Oh, you don't. When I first saw you <coughs> at that dance... God, help me. <laughs> it seemed that I was in a trance. I couldn't move or cross the floor. I'd shut my shirt tail in the door. <laughs> Sorry. My love for you had struck me dumb. Ah. Don't you dare. What? <laughs> the words I felt refused to come. I staggered to your side and then... The vicar says she's drunk again. Oh, it's... I'm sorry, but I find it's all so embarrassing. Well, you shouldn't. In the days when you wrote that, you were, you know... Mentally deranged. <laughs> No, you were passionate and unashamedly romantic. Yeah, but I, I love you differently now, June. I mean, when I was young, it was fiery and tempestuous, like a raging torrent. Now it's soothing and comforting, like a... like a... Corn plaster. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to do? I mean, chuck my jacket over puddles for you, ski down the side of it, <laughs> precipice leaving boxes of chocolates all over the place? Oh, I'm not really complaining, darling. I mean, after all, I'm not exactly besotted with you, either. Aren't you? Why not? Well, all I'm saying is that romance seems to have disappeared from our marriage, and I, for one, regret it. Why? Well, yes, you can see. I can tell you. I'm, I can be just as romantic as ever I was. Give me a hand. What? Give me your hand. Ah, uh, beautiful. Ah, okay. uh, perfect. <laughs> I'm going to kiss every little finger of it. This little piggy went to market, and this little piggy stayed alone. Oh, Terry. I'm going not so fast, my little cabbage. Three little piggies still to go. <laughs> This one had roast beef, this had none, and this little piggy went mm, 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 all the way home. This is your idea of being romantic, is it? Nibbling my neck? That's just the appetizer. You put the lights up, we'll get on to the main course. No more little piggies, promise. No more piggies, no. Now it's time for the big bad wolf. <laughs> oh, Terry! <laughs> Last week you thought romance was dead. You said we're past it, rather. But then I went and proved you wrong with a bit of how's your father. <laughs> Could be better, I think. Mm. Come in. Ah, oh, just passing by. Terry, why don't you finish with the Clifton file? Yes, yes, here it is. Oh, good, thank you. Oh, by the way, about dinner this evening, I know it's June's birthday, so Beatty was wondering if she ought to dress up a bit. Oh, no, no, just tell her to come in something comfortable. Oh, I don't do that. She'll turn up in one of her saris. She lolls around the house in them, looking like a collapsed wigwam. <laughs> Never learned to wrap them properly, you see, so halfway through the evening she starts to unravel. Oh. <laughs> very, very embarrassing. Oh, not really. She always wears a good thick vest underneath. <laughs> well, oh, oh, before you go, Malcolm, um, confidentially, has has Beatty ever complained about the lack of romance in your marriage? Good God, no. Mind you, there's precious little romance to start off with. Oh, so you're not still besotted? <laughs> but of course I am, oh boy. <laughs> but not with Beatty. <laughs> Every now and again, some pretty little piece of coronary fodder catches my eye and ka-chung! <laughs> what? 
Ka-chung! <laughs> what, what, what's ka-chung? Well, it's what happens inside. Where? Inside me. Huh. Well, the old mind goes boggles, the, the mouth goes dry, and the old ticker goes... Uh, Ka-chung! Exactly. It's hmm. what keeps you young. Oh, well, Malcolm, I, I love my wife very much. What makes you think I don't love Beatty very much? I mean, just because I have the odd flirtation, you mustn't jump to conclusions. Oh, I'm sorry, Malcolm. No, that's all right. As a matter of fact, I don't love her very much. <laughs> but I'm awfully fond of her. I mean, she's, she's like an old jacket I do the gardening in. Never think twice about it, but if someone threw it away, I'd be absolutely heartbroken. <laughs> well, ours, ours is a very happy marriage. It's just that she was rather sad. It's not the same as it was when we were younger. Well, in that case, turn back the clock. Uh, play her old Glenn Miller records. Take her to revivals of Oklahoma. Buy her a snood. A what? <laughs> a snood. Try to recapture those heady days when you were young and foolish. Uh, it might work, I suppose. Actually, you're talking about old jackets has given me an idea. Good. Uh, <laughs> and if that fails to romanticise you, well, take the brakes off your ticker. Who knows? The next woman you clap eyes on could be the answer to all your problems. Mm. Oh, oh, forgive me, sir. I'm afraid I've mislaid my glasses. Well, perhaps not the next woman, exactly. <laughs> Keep your eyes open anyway. Here we are, sir. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Little treasure you've got there, Terry. Jolly sight more efficient than the saucy little piece I've got. <laughs> Still, horses for courses, eh? <laughs> My apologies, Mr. Medford. Uh, over, over here, Miss Cooley. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I, I, I'm dreadfully sorry I'm so late. Uh, it's all right, Miss Cooley. No, it is not all right, Mr. Medford. Unforgivable, inexcusable, unprofessional it may be, but all right, it most certainly is not. You see, I've been having these these personal problems of late, which I really can't go into now. Well, I don't wish you I, I really wish you wouldn't press me about them now. Oh, I won't, I won't. Foolish little problems, perhaps, but they they blind me to everything else. Oh, is that what causes it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry about your problems. I can't go into them now, Mr. Medford. I don't want, don't want you to, Miss Coons. <laughs> All I want you to do is to take this present to my wife round to the jewellers and get it engraved by this afternoon. I, I would have done it sooner, but I can't think what to put on it. What about, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. Hang on, hang on. I'm not, I'm not giving her a gold brick, you know. I mean, <laughs> it needs to be something short and simple. I love you. Pardon? Simply engrave, I love you on it. Well, maybe that's a bit too simple. I mean, you know, with things like that, so much depends on the inflection. Like, uh, I love you. Hmm? I love you. Do you see what I mean, Miss Coolidge? I love you. Yes, I love you. Good God, he's taken my advice to heart. <laughs> no, we, need, we need something stronger. I adore you. I worship you. You make me go weak at the knees. Terry and Miss Coolidge will have a <laughs> Make my heart stand still. Oh, yes, ten out of ten for that one. Good God, she's giving him marks out of ten. <laughs> no, no, it, it's all too slushy. We need something sincere but dignified. Uh, wait a minute, I've got it, I've got it. Look, take this card round to the jewellers and tell them to put this message on it. I'm going out to find a dress hire shop this afternoon. If I'm not back when you get in, wait for me in the office. I'm on my Hey, Mr. Bedford, <laughs> this is so romantic. I feel just like blind Cupid. Yeah, well, try and find your glasses before you attempt to cross the road. <laughs> what a lovely, lovely man. Jerry? Yeah? Ka chung, ka chung. <laughs> Hello, June. Oh, come in, Tina. I've just popped in to borrow a cup of what's it? Sugar? No, um... Milk? No, oh yeah, creme de menthe. <laughs> creme de menthe? I don't think we've got any. Oh, shame. I was going to make Brian's favourite tipple. It's made with vodka, white rum and creme de menthe. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yeah, we call it a Siberian avalanche. One sip and you feel like the roof's caved in. <laughs> yeah, that looks nice. What is it? Avocado, fool. I was only asking. <laughs> Tina, that's what it is. It's like gooseberry, fool, only you make it with avocados and limes. Oh, it sounds posh. You've got people coming to dinner. Yes, as a matter of fact, it's my birthday. Oh, congratulations. Terry, give you anything nice? Yes, a lovely card. Well, only a card. Oh, my Brian gave me a super present last week. 
Mm, it weren't even my birthday. Two dozen long-stemmed roses and a bottle of Channel Number no. Five, big enough to pickle onions in. <laughs> Mind you, he got a lot to make up for, didn't he? Did he? Well, didn't I tell you? All June, he'd been having a thing with his secretary. No. Yes. Well, he tried to hide it from me, but they can't help giving themselves away, can they? Well, how did he do that? Well, he'd always been very passionate. And then suddenly it dried up. <laughs> you mean he wasn't as romantic as he had been? Well, it was like being married to a fishmonger slab. <laughs> and then he suddenly started acting all mysterious. Every time the phone rang, he always insisted on answering it in case it was her, and then he was always working late at the office. And to cap it all, he went and forgot my birthday, just like Terry did. Terry didn't forget my birthday. Oh, yeah, he gave you a card, you said, didn't you? Well, where is he? Well, as a matter of fact, he's working late at the... Oh, there he is now, Tina. Hello, darling. Hello. You're back later than you expected. Yes, I had to wait for somebody in the office and she didn't... Uh, they, they didn't show up. Um, any phone calls for me? No. Ah. Everything ah. all right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> What's in the box? Uh, which box? The one behind your back. <laughs> oh, that box. Oh, you'll see soon enough. <laughs> so, there were no phone calls? No. Ah, oh, well, I'd uh, better go and get changed then. Are you sure everything's all right? You seem a bit edgy. Edgy? No, no. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'll get it. I'll get it. <clears throat> Hello? Oh, Mr. Medford, can you ever forgive me? Yeah, hang on. Uh, it's for me. Who is it? Oh, uh, uh, business. Uh, you know, uh, what's her name? Uh, Miss Coolidge. <laughs> Your secretary? That's right, yes. Uh, uh, do you mind? <laughs> do you mind if I have a, pri a little pri privacy? I mean, this is important. Oh, yes, of course, Terry, if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Come on, Tina. Tina! Oh, sorry. Yeah, would you <laughs> shut the door behind you, please? Miss Coolidge, what happened? I waited over an hour for you. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Medford. Did I tell you I was having these personal problems? Yeah, but don't don't go into them now, please. Have you have you got the the you know what? Of course I have, Mr. Medford. I pride myself on my efficiency. Uh, fine, fine. But well, when when am I going to get it? A friend's agreed to drive me round right away. I just want to. Never mind what you want. You know what I want, and I want it tonight. <laughs> efficiency. She's about as efficient as a wet box of matches. <laughs> Tina, come away from that door. Oh, all right. It's off the phone anyway. It's despicable eavesdropping on Terry like that. What did he say? Well, oh, no, I don't want to know. I trust my husband. What am I doing? Well, that's what it does to you. You keep asking yourself why all the time. Why has he stopped noticing me? I mean, suddenly Brian didn't care how I looked. He was too busy titivating himself. He even went and got his old teddy boy gear out of mothballs. Why did he do that? God knows. I suppose he thought it would make him look young again. Of course, what's worst is all them pitying looks what you get from your friends. Yes. Don't you start giving me any any pitying looks, Tina. I'm not the least bit worried about Terry. Just as well you never heard what he said on the phone, then. I told you, Tina, I don't want to know. Not even if it'll put your mind at rest. Will it? No. <laughs> what did he say? I thought you didn't want to know. What did he say? Well, I didn't catch all of it, but he did ask when he was going to get it. Get what? Well, your guess is as good as mine, but whatever it is, he wants it tonight. Tonight? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Terry. You like it? Brings back romantic memories, does it? Here, Terry, why are you dressed like a waiter? <laughs> this is a white dinner jacket I used to wear one when we were courting. Got it out of mothballs, did you? I, I just hired it this afternoon. It's lovely, darling. Yeah, it makes you look young again. Tina! You know where I'll be if you need me. Oh, let me get upstairs first. I haven't done my hair. No, I haven't you? I hadn't noticed. Terry, don't say that. Huh? Ah, Beatty, welcome. You come in. Ah, evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, table for two, please. Not too near the bow. <laughs> This was your idea, you know. What, dressing up as a waiter? <laughs> this is a white dinner jacket. I'd like to freshen up, if I may. Yes, of course. It's the second on I know where it is, thank you. What? What's up with her? Where's Jim? Upstairs. Right. What? What was the matter? Where? Hang on. What, what's, uh, what, what's gone wrong? This. Hmm? Beatty found it amongst my things before we left the house. Read it. 
My dearest Roly Poly. <laughs> Roly-poly. <laughs> yeah, well, go on, go on, go on. I can no longer continue in the role of the other woman. I'm tired of sneaking into the house whenever she's out. Oh, Malcolm. Well, it gets worse. You have given her the best years of your life. Surely I deserve some of what is left. You must choose between us. Oh, no wonder Pete is upset. Yes, well, the damn thing fell out of one of the folders I took home this evening. I swear, Terry, I've never seen it before, but Beatty found it and thought it was mine. <laughs> With your track record, I'm not surprised. God, you are in trouble, Malcolm. <laughs> no, Terry. You are. Why? I persuaded her it was yours. <laughs> you are? Well, it was the first thing that came into my mind. What a rotten mind you have. Well, I mean, you're the right shape for a roly-poly. Pardon? <laughs> now, OK, you've got to help me out. At some point during the evening, Beatty is going to ask you if this is your letter, and you're going to say yes. Well, I can't say that in front of June. Don't we'll be discreet. June didn't know anything about it. I'm sorry, Look, If you don't back up my story, my marriage is on the rocks, and if it found us, so does your career with the firm. You wouldn't. I would. You rotter. Granted. But, mm. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean who, who, who can I say wrote it? Well, your secretary, of course. Miss Coolidge? Well, yes, I mean, she's the one you're having an affair with, after all. Well, I suppose if... What? What? What, <laughs> what affair? Well, I heard everything this afternoon, Terry. I love you, I adore you, you make me go weak at the knees. But you, you don't understand. You're damn right I don't. What in God's name do you see in her? Not a bloody thing. I mean, you, <laughs> you've got it all wrong. I mean, there's absolutely nothing in it. Nothing in what? Uh, in, in his glass. He hasn't got one. I'll get you a drink. Uh, we're dry, Sherry. Uh, oh, super. And happy birthday, June. Thanks, Malcolm. <laughs> June. Hello, Beatty. Uh, might I have a word with you? Yes, of course. In private. Of course. Oh, crumbs. June. Yes. How are you? Fine. Are you? Yes. Are you really? Well, I've still got one oh, or two things to do in the be kitchen. Such but swine I... sometimes, can't they? Can they? Oh, I mustn't say too much at this moment, must I? You haven't really said anything yet. Perhaps it's better that way. But believe me, June, whatever happens, I am your friend. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, uh, Beatty, could I get you... Terry, I am in a frightful position. Well, it looks rather decorative from here. <laughs> Be quiet, Malcolm. Uh. Whatever the outcome of this interview, someone is going to be terribly, terribly hurt. If you deny ownership of this letter, it means that Malcolm has lied. No, he won't deny it. Be quiet, Malcolm. If, on the other hand, Malcolm was telling the truth, that lovely woman out there is going to be absolutely shattered. Well, she didn't know anything about it, surely, Beatty. I mean, this is strictly on true. Of course she has to know. I'm her friend. Crikey, with friends like you, who needs enemies? <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm, I... I can't admit to it now, not if she's going to tell June. No, it's tricky. I'm sorry to put you on a spot like this. Well, that's quite all right, Ophelia. Uh, before we drop the subject, just to, just clarify one point, uh, just for Beatty's sake. What point? Well, if Beatty hadn't intended telling June, you were going to confess that that letter was yours, weren't you? Oh, yes, I was, actually. You see, Beatty's admitted it. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, Terry. Uh, but, but Beatty is not true. No, I'm sorry, Terry. You've cried wolf once too often. Yeah, there's only one wolf round here. Kachung, kachung. <laughs> and with Miss Coolidge, too. Oh, oh, but listen, I mean, look, I mean, you, you see Miss Coolidge. Do you think I'd cheat on June for her? Well, then why did she write this letter? Ah, well... Yeah, this ought to be good. <laughs> now, you, you may find this hard to believe. More than likely. Oh, be quiet, Malcolm. Yeah, be quiet, Malcolm. Um, <laughs> you see, Miss Coolidge is not a well woman. How do you mean? Well, to put this as delicately as possible, she's... She's... Nutty? As a fruitcake, uh. yes. <laughs> she keeps writing these letters to me as if we're having a big affair. I mean, it's very embarrassing, but what can you say? I mean, the poor thing's absolutely dotting. Well, why didn't you tell her to stop it? Oh, I couldn't do that. No, you couldn't do that. Why not? Yes, why not? Well, I couldn't shatter her dreams. I mean, she has so little to live for, and anyway, what harm does it do? But if June found out... But she's not going to find out, is she? Is she? Terry, do you swear you never see Miss Coolidge after office hours? Never. And that she never comes to this house? Never. And that every word you've spoken is true? Never. What? Uh, ever. Never, <laughs> ever. Never, ever doubt it. I'm convinced. Thank God for that. Now then, what have you all been talking about? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, wasn't, wasn't it? it? <laughs> yes. Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Uh, Malcolm, help yourself to another affair. Uh, drink. <laughs> Terribly sorry, Mr. Medford. Well, where is it? In my bag. Well, give it to me straight away and disappear. Disappear? Yeah, all hell has broken loose. If you're seen anywhere near this house, my marriage is finished. Oh, dear, and it was going so well, too. Terry. Oh, 
was it, darling? Uh, wrong number. <laughs> it was the front door. Uh, wrong number, front door. Yes, they wanted 28, so uh, three doors down. Terry. Yeah? I'm ashamed of myself for asking you this, and I, I know you're going to laugh your head off, but there's nothing going on between you and your secretary, is there? What's Speedy been saying? You didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. She promised she wouldn't say anything. Who did? Beatty. It was Tina. Tina? What does she know about it? Brian's been doing exactly the same. What, with Miss Coolidge? <laughs> that, that's them again. They certainly are persistent. Yes, so am I. We'll continue this conversation later. I know it's in here somewhere, Mr. Haven't Medford. Haven't you found it yet? Give it here. Give it here. I still don't understand why my presence should ruin your marriage. Everybody thinks we're having an, an affair. <gasps> Mr. Medford, what Shh. have you been saying? Not a word. I haven't said a word. And, and, and June's present isn't in here either. Oh, in that case, I must have left it in the car. Aren't I a silly? That wasn't quite the word I had in mind. <laughs> nip out. Nip out and get it quickly. Hell, hell. It'll probably be in the... Shh. And you must be seen. Was that the front door again? I don't know, was it? Oh, yes, it was. Yes, I okay. Well, then, could you come in the kitchen? I need some help. You're not the only one. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry to trouble you, but is Miss Coolidge here? Yes, yeah, she's in the car. Oh, uh, <laughs> Miss Coolidge, I drove her here. It's not them back again, is it? Yeah, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. How many times have I got to tell you you've got the wrong house? <laughs> Could you come and open the wine? Wine, wine. Uh, You'll need the corkscrew. Corkscrew. It's cork. in the drawer. Drawer, drawer. Uh, sorry, June. Upset the nuts in there. Where's the carpet sweeper? Oh, in the cupboard under the stairs. Right here. Uh, cupboard under the stairs. Oh! oh. <laughs> no, we can't. We can't have the guests clearing up, es especially when he's the boss. <laughs> Malcolm. Yes. You, you've got the carpet sweeper. Yes. From the cupboard under the stairs. Yes. Ah. Uh, it was handed to me. Yes. By someone in there. Yes. Miss Coolidge. Yes. Ah. Uh, well, I have to admire your nerve, Terry. <laughs> nerve? Well, not only do you smuggle your women into the house, but you keep them in the broom cupboard. <laughs> Look, you got me into this. Look, if I get June into the living room with Beatty, you, you can entertain them while I sneak around. Entertain them? Well, surely you, you must know some parlour tricks. Well, not as many as you seem to do. <laughs> oh, Malcolm, let me do well, that. No, 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 do you know, he's got the most astonishing card trick. He, he can't, can't wait to show it to you. Oh, really, Malcolm? Yes, it's called The Vanishing Lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Coolidge, you can come out in a little while. <laughs> oh, crumbs. I'm sorry to trouble you, but I'm convinced that Miss Coolidge is in here. Yeah, well, if you just lower your voice, I can explain. I don't want an explanation. I want my fiance, Melanie. Yeah, the, the, there's no, nothing to be gained by shouting. Where does the carpet sweeper go? In Jay? the cupboard under the stairs. If no, uh, just just what I've been looking for. Isn't it incredible how filthy dirty the whole carpet's get in a very short space of time? Melanie, uh, where the hell are you going? I saw her come in here, and I'm not leaving without her, Melanie. Mr. Melanie, no, I can't. not not yet, what? not yet. <laughs> Melanie. Melanie? Queen of Hearts. No. Melanie? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Melanie? May I ask you what you're doing? Looking for my fiancé. Seven of Spades. No. no. Get, get out of this house. Not without Miss Coolidge. Two o'clock. Do you mean to say you saw Miss Coolidge enter this house? I drove her here. She, she had to see this gentleman. And you said she never came near this house. June, as your friend, I'm afraid I have to tell you, Terry has been having an affair with Miss Coolidge. Yes. Why? You keep your hands. Keep your hands to yourself. I, I might get hurt. Hmm? <laughs> is it true? Oh, June. June, I mean, how could you ask that question? Oh, this letter is reason enough. My dearest Roly Poly, I can no longer continue in the role of the other woman. Yeah, what are you doing with my letter? Your letter? Yes, it's a, a carbon copy of the one I've got in my pocket. A copy? Oh, yeah, she's a very efficient secretary. Keeps copies of everything. Well, I'm very embarrassed by this. Roly Poly is a private name she has for me. Well, I could think of a better name for you, you bounder, leaving, leading my secretary up the garden path, and you a married man. Well, I'm not married. Then who's the other woman? Hmm. Oh, well, I suppose she means my mother. You see, she's never approved of Melanie, so we've had to keep our engagement in the dark for 12 years. 
Well, no, no wonder her eyesight's bad. <laughs> Isn't it about time you made an honest woman of her? Well, not that it's any of your business, but as a matter of fact, on the way over here, I proposed and happily was accepted. Oh, congratulations. Ah. Beatty, Malcolm Jr., aren't you, aren't you ashamed of your doubting me? Well, let's face it, Ophir, I mean, your behaviour has been a little odd this evening. Odd? Odd me? That I categorically deny. Well, uh, in that case, perhaps you'd better show us all what you've done with Miss Coolidge. Ah. Yes, where is she, Melanie? I think you'll find her in the vicinity of the hall cupboard. No, no where? Yeah, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. No, look, no, oh. Oh, you are rotten. You spoilt my surprise. What surprise? Well, for you, on, on your birthday. Now, wait, now, wait, just now, a minute. Listen, now, listen, for heaven's sake. Because, because it was June's birthday, Miss Coolidge and I got together to, to give... Well, anyway, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Miss Coolidge? <laughs> what surprise? Well, it surprised me. <laughs> Oh, Miss Coolidge, come in. Melanie! <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Medford. I just couldn't stay in that cupboard a minute longer. That's right, and thank you. <sighs> Did my husband actually shut you in the cupboard? Well, I'm sure he had a very good reason for it, Mrs. Medford. I'll bet he did. Well, I think it's time for a toast for the, to the impending marriage. Oh. Uh, yes, uh, would you do the honours, Malcolm? I just want a quick word with Terry. Well, of course, I expect you two could do with the drink. Rather, we haven't told his mother yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, darling. I hope you're present. I don't want a present, Terry. All I want is your trust. Wouldn't fit you. <laughs> Trust! Open your present. Did you really think I wouldn't believe you? I mean, all you had to do was to come and explain, but no, you have to resort to tricks and deceit. I'm saddened, Terry. I'm very, very disappointed. Oh, darling, it's lovely. And if you really want to know what I think, if you read the inscription. To the most understanding wife, in the world. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Who said I can't pick them? <laughs> we mustn't keep our guests waiting. Why not? They've had plenty of practice 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Secretly engaged for 12 years. And you said romance at our age wasn't possible. Ah, oh, it's possible. It's just bloody exhausting. 